Hey everyone! Today, I want to talk about one of our planet's most fearsome predators. It's called the Pliosaurus. Chances are, many of you are already familiar with these guys thanks to their starring roles in Walking with Dinosaurs and Predator X. And let me tell you, both of those specials had a pretty big impact on me. Especially Predator X, because it was the first time I realized that television programs, even the ones with those sultry voice narrators, often fabricate their stories for the sake of entertainment. I mean, sure, I knew Jurassic Park was nonsense, a profitable zoo, Sure, and I'm the Pope. But the History Channel? That was supposed to be the real deal. But hey, props to the Pliosaurus PR team. Between TV specials, documentaries like Walking with Dinosaurs, Pliosaurus know how to keep their audiences hooked. Heck, even YouTube got in on the action. With all the attention these animals are getting, you'd think we'd have a pretty solid understanding of how they actually live. But nope. We still can't even call Predator X by its actual name. If you ask me, it's time we stop treating Pliosaurus like they're some kind of wannabe crocs and scaling them up just to add a thrill factor. So today, we're taking a look at three of my favorite Pliosaurus and answering the question why we keep getting Pliosaurus wrong. Don't forget to hit that like button and let's dive into this. Alright, so let's talk about Pliosaurus. What is it? And why the heck do we have three of them? Actually, there's way more than only three species of Pliosaurus, but we'll get to these three beauties in a minute. First, it's time for a patented napkin animation special, oversimplifying animal classification. Right, so first off, we have a group of marine reptiles called Plesiosauria. Then within that group, we essentially have two different teams. If you have a long neck, then congrats, you're a Plesiosaur. Have fun being mistaken for the Loch Ness Monster. But if you have a short neck, then congrats, people probably think you're a Mosasaur or something. Which is a bit like calling a bear a raccoon because they both have teeth. But guess what, shortnecks? Today is your day. Pliosaurus, or more specifically Pliosaurus, was basically the muscle cars of the Jurassic Oceans. Giant skulls, streamlined bodies, and really only good for a short burst of speed. Okay, I have to admit something. As a car carrying Mosasaur fanboy, I'm usually pretty ride or die when it comes to my favorite sea lizards. But these guys? They seriously give Mosasaur a run for their money. So let's start by taking a look at the Plesiosaur named after the King of Titans, Kronosaurus, with a K. The year is 1889, and we are in the wonderful country of Australia, where everything wants to kill you. So naturally, when paleontologists dug up and discovered a new prehistoric creature, surprise, it's another thing that probably wanted to kill you. At first, paleontologists took one look at this jumbled mess of bones and went, yep, yeah, that's probably an ichthyosaur or something. But fear not, fast forward 30 years, and they found another Kronosaurus fossil, this time with a skeleton that's actually recognizable. This bad boy was about 50% complete, with a solid chunk of skull, body, and flippers all still intact. In fact, the only bits that were missing were several vertebrae and most of the tail. Not really a big deal, right? Spoiler alert, it's actually kind of a big deal. But we'll get to the vertebrae later. First, let's take a look at its skeleton and see what we can learn from it. If your first thought is, Hey, this looks like a giant crocodile with flippers. Congrats, you're in the right place. But don't get too comfortable, because Kronosaurus was way more fearsome than that. The best way I can describe Kronosaurus is all chonk, no breaks. It had a ridiculously long neck, a comically oversized head, and jaws full of teeth built for pulverizing anything dumb enough to get too close. So how does that stack up against, say, a Mosasaur? Well, Mosasaurs were all about speed. Instead of using their flippers like paddles, Mosasaurs swam like eels, whipping their tails back and forth like a jet through the water to chase down their prey. But you know what that sounds like to me? Effort. And as someone who actively avoids anything resembling exercise, I have to respect Kronosaurus' game plan a lot more. Personally, I find the easiest way to hunt is to simply step back and have your food come to you, which is more or less the game plan for Kronosaurus here. Instead of running an aquatic triathlon, Kronosaurus played it smart. In order to hunt for food, it would sneak up on some poor unsuspecting fish and then BAM! Using its large flippers, lunge forward and use its powerful jaw to crush its unsuspecting prey. None of that long distance marathon stuff, just an effective and terrifying way to grab a meal. Speaking of eating meals, what was on the menu? The short answer is everything. Big fish? Sure. Hard shell ammonites? Why not? Other marine reptiles like Ichthyosaurus and other Plesiosaurs? You bet. You see, when you're one of the largest apex predators on the planet, there's not really a whole lot that can stop you. But if you're a fan of walking with dinosaurs, you know that Kronosaurus pales in comparison to our next species. And if you're wondering what animal could possibly give this beefcake a run for its money, it's a Liopleurodon, Charlie. Now, as much as I would love an adventure to Candy Mountain, Charlie the Unicorn was not my first introduction to this massive Pliosaurus known as Liopleurodon. Let's take a little journey down memory lane. Picture it, me, a young monster, Wide-eyed and innocent? I 
absolutely fascinated by dinosaurs and other prehistoric creatures. I'm flipping through random channels and land on the BBC's Walking with Dinosaurs. Arguably one of the greatest gifts to mankind. And there it is, Lyopleurodon, this hulking oceanic leviathan. The scene opens with a large theropod strutting along the beach, just minding its own business, probably enjoying the view and thinking, life is good, when suddenly, BAM! Out of nowhere, a Lyopleurodon launches itself out of the water like a 150 pound torpedo of death. In one fell swoop, it grabbed our friend right off the beach and swallowed him whole. It was incredible! I remember just sitting there staring at the screen thinking, did, did that thing just eat a T-Rex? Holy cow! Turns out, it wasn't actually a T-Rex. I was really young, and to me, if you were a theropod, you were either a T-Rex or a raptor. Maybe an Allosaurus if I saw the horn. But regardless of what kind of dinosaur was eaten, this was one of the coolest things I had ever seen. Then, the narrator hits me with the stats, as though that matters. This thing just ate a T-Rex. In a smooth, honey-dipped tone, the narrator says, At 150 tons, it's the largest and most powerful carnivore ever to live on the planet. And just in case that didn't get the point across, the narrator then goes on to tell us that the male we're looking at is over 25 meters long and over 100 years old. Okay, game over. This thing wins. I mean, I was just going to compare it to Chronosaurus and say, look how much bigger and more impressive Lyopleurodon is. But now we're getting into Megalodon territory. Heck, we're even flirting with blue whale sizes. How I had never heard of this absolute legend before. Why weren't there statues of it in museums? Where was the theme park? Where is it? What's going on? Yeah. It turns out, this scene was one of the biggest exaggerations about a prehistoric animal ever put to screen. Nice try, Mosasaur from Jurassic World. Even you can't touch this level of dramatization. So yeah, it turns out Lyopleurodon wasn't 150 tons. Nor is it even close to 25 meters long. It was probably close to 7, maybe 10 meters in length. And even that's on a good day. But here's the thing. Even if Lyopleurodon wasn't the monstrous behemoth the BBC hyped it up to be, it's still one of the coolest creatures to ever swim in the oceans. In fact, by portraying Lyopleurodon as this massive kaiju, audiences missed out on what makes it special. It's not about its size, it's about that sleek, deadly design. While its chunky cousins like Chronosaurus and Predator X were all about brute force, Lyopleurodon was built for speed and precision. Its sleek, streamlined bodies allowed them to be faster and more agile while gliding through the water. And that's not all. Take a look at Lyopleurodon's teeth. Unlike the other Pliosaurs, who had serrated teeth that were designed for tearing through the flesh of large prey, Lyopleurodon's teeth were smooth and conical, which was a dead giveaway that this animal wasn't just another underwater brawler. How do we know this? Well, if your teeth aren't built for shredding, you've really got two options. Either be big enough to crush your prey outright, or target something slippery, where piercing works better than slicing. Basically, Lyopleurodon was hunting small and medium-sized fish instead of grappling with those giant marine reptiles all the time. It's sort of like the difference between a heavyweight wrestler and a ninja. Both are deadly, but one's a little more refined. Now, don't get me wrong, Lyopleurodon was still plenty capable of taking on larger prey when it needed to. But the important thing to understand is that unlike its bulkier cousins, it didn't have to. That gave it a huge survival advantage. Hunting giant sea reptiles is risky business, even for the largest of predators. One wrong move, and you're not just missing a meal, you're missing half your face. Lyopleurodon's agility and versatile diet meant it could adapt to different situations. If it felt like it needed a challenge, it could go after something big. If not, it could settle for a quick snack on some smaller fish. Options, baby. That's how you win the prehistorical food chain. So yeah, even though Lyopleurodon might not have been the massive T-Rex eating leviathan I saw on TV, in some ways, the real animal is even cooler. When you see it as the highly specialized aquatic assassin, it really was. It might not have been the biggest or bulkiest, but it didn't need to be. It was sleek, fast, and adaptable. Easily one of the most incredible animals to ever live. So how do you top that? Well, it all starts by giving our next animal one of the coolest names of all time, Predator X. It's a bit outlandish, but personally, I'm here for it. After all, if you want to make something sound cool, add it next to it. Boom! Instant street cred. Of course, as all you paleontology fans already know, Predator X isn't actually called Predator X. Its proper name is Pliosaurus Funky. Yeah, I know, way less menacing. Almost sounds like a name you give to your pet gecko or something. But as you all probably know by now, once again, its first portrayal in media was a bit ambitious. But how did we get here? Why did we make the same mistake with Predator X that we made with Lyopleurodon? Well, first off, that's progress. But to better understand why television networks seem unable to use rulers, we need to go back to the discovery of this animal. Back in 2006, a team of Norwegian scientists, clearly tired of sunshine and warm weather, decided to poke around the Arctic. And, as one does when you're freezing your butt off up in the Arctic, they stumbled upon some enormous fossils embedded in the ground. 
The paleontologists quickly realized that these bones belonged to an enormous pliosaur with powerful front limbs. And so, the stage was set for scientists to introduce the world to the largest pliosaur ever found. So I'm pretty sure the History Channel can handle it. Listen, they ran out of World War II specials, and their documentary on Bigfoot running an underground alien casino wasn't finished. They needed to fill that time slot. Anyways, similar to the BBC's coverage on Liaplardon, Predator X got the Godzilla treatment, claiming it was 50% larger than it actually was, and 5 times heavier than what scientists estimated. Wow, how rude! However, unlike our previous contender, I have to give the History Channel a little credit here. Despite their overestimates on size, they did manage to cover the important stuff, such as this animal being the largest pliosaurus we've ever found, and going into detail about how powerful its jaw muscles were. Albeit, while taking some creative liberties. That said, I know that's not why you all are here. You all want to know, what does the science actually say about this prehistoric beast? And, what have we learned since the airing of this special? So, let's break it down. The two most standout features of Pliosaurus Funky are its powerful front limbs and its impressive chompers. We don't really need to go into too much detail about Predator X's bite force, but it's important to note that compared to Liaplorodon and even Kronosaurus, Predator X was much more likely to land a fatal blow when biting its prey. Which, not gonna lie, is pretty impressive, sure, but it's those front flippers I really want to dive into. You can learn a lot about an animal by looking at its appendages. For example, animals who run long distances tend to have really long femur bones when compared to the tibia bones. A similar analysis was done on T-Rex to determine it was likely a poor long distance runner. So what does that mean for animals who live in the water? Does having a long humerus automatically make you the Michael Phelps of the Jurassic? Nope. Wait, what? Yeah, apparently it's not that simple. Turns out, swimming isn't just about bone length. Sure, having a long humerus might give you a beefier stroke, but it also adds a ton of drag, which in turn slows you down. So let's take another look at Predator X. At first glance, its limbs are giving off marathon runner vibes. However, in the water, that might have worked against it. And thankfully, our story doesn't end here. There's a whole lot more these fossils can tell us. By comparing the size of the bones in their flippers to the bones in their necks, scientists are able to decode the mystery around how these animals moved. For instance, smaller neck bones mean more flexibility, and thicker limb bones mean better stabilization. That's cool, Napkin, but I didn't come here for a lesson on osteology. Why is all this important? Well, despite all the differences we talked about today, on the surface, all these animals seem pretty similar. I mean, let's be honest, all three of these animals are large apex predators who rely on ambush hunting and will occasionally go after larger prey. Not a whole lot to work with. However, if we study their body structure, we can answer the important stuff, like how do they do it? You see, these three weren't playing by the same rules. Liaplardon, for example, had long flippers and a flexible neck, meaning it was built for movement and agility. Kronosaurus, on the other hand, was a straight up tank, thick neck, sturdy limbs, and a beefy body built for brawling. Seriously, this thing was a brute. Half of the fossils we found look like they've been in bar fights. But where does Predator X fit in? Well, plot twist, it's Goldilocks. Not too flexible, not too sturdy, but just right. Meaning the question as to whether or not Predator X was taking on the other large marine reptiles, or if it was more like a modern whale and going after smaller prey, the answer is yes. Not only was our friend here the largest of all pliosaurs, it was also the most versatile. Which means it doesn't matter if you were a small fish or a large reptile, Predator X was coming for you. In fact, there it goes now. Just watch, it's about to go after that strange looking pliosaurus. Or wait, based upon the tail, I'm guessing that's actually a mosasaur. It's actually neither. This is a croc who, but it's in the middle of the ocean. Right. So we can conclude, and unless I'm wrong, crocs like to live near land so they can come up on shore to warm up. That's also correct, which means these crocs, and what about babies? Don't crocs like to get birth- I'll stop interrupting, please finish. Unfortunately, we're out of time. No! So I guess we'll have to leave the story of the crocs who return to the sea for another video. Until then, I want to thank you all for watching. If you enjoyed this video and would like to see more, please consider subscribing to my channel, and don't forget to bring snacks.